welcome to this Betfair Cheltenham Festival preview show. This is the preview show you have been waiting for because, of course, I am joined by the usual esteemed panel to run through the four days of the Cheltenham Festival. We'll be getting stuck into all the big races. We've got loads coming your way, but there's four days of it and there's 28 races. And as you will see from this panel in the next 90 minutes or so, you don't have to have a bet in every single race. You don't have to get involved. You can leave a race or even a day behind if you don't have a strong opinion. And of course, we here at Betfair, we want you to enjoy the week. We want you to get stuck in, but we do want you to do it responsibly and have a bit of fun with it. And Betfair have a whole host of safer gambling tools for you to use. So many users already use those tools. So why wouldn't you also use them? So please go and find out more about them on the Betfair website. But without further ado, let's get stuck in. This is it. This is the time of year. I couldn't love it anymore. And I'm so looking forward to the next 90 minutes because these guys are going to point us in the direction of some winners. Daryl Carter, a joy to have you here. Your first time to the Irish Betfair offices. How are you? Um, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so thrilled. <laughs> this is it. This is the time to get excited, isn't it? Hey, these four days at Cheltenham next week, is uh, it's, just, it's just unbelievable, isn't it? And uh, I, I'm, I can't wait to get stuck in today. Strong opinions. Love it. Strong opinions only. That's what this show is going to be about. Isn't that right, Kevin? No waffle. Straight to the point. Winners are grinners. Yeah, sure, look, we'll try and find a few runners anyway, and hopefully some of them go on to win. That'd be great. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll, start, we'll start low and hopefully hit the stars. Hey, look, we could, we could start on a bit of a low point in terms of the missing horses and your negativity around the Cheltenham Festival, but we're not going to. It's only positivity on this show. I'm, I'm, and like, that all, I'm like that all the time. That's not just yeah. Cheltenham. <laughs> and obviously, because we want to be all about positivity, that's why we've got Tony Calvin with us, <laughs> the yeah, most positive say. man I know. How are you? <laughs> I'm not bad. It takes something for me not to be the most negative person on the panel for once. So, yeah. I, I, I'm listening to Daryl there. I remember I, the last time I was that enthusiastic was about 30 years ago, I think. So, yeah. So, but, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm reliably told that all we need is winners, so I'm going to tip up 28 favourites. Love it. Love it. I know you're winning. Prices are relevant. Uh, just want winners. Ooh. Barry Orr, how are you over there? I'm very well. How are you? Very well, very much looking forward to this. What would the bet fair have it for us over the next 90 minutes or so? Well, obviously for, our, for Cheltenham itself, it's a completely free bet on horse racing multiples every day at the festival, so watch out for that. We have a host of, of odds boosts this, this afternoon as well on each, uh, on each of the big races. And you were talking there about our safer gambling. Everyone gets caught up in the excitement and the emotion of, of Cheltenham, but the safer gambling tools that you spoke about, there's some real crackers on there where you can set deposit and loss limits. You can, a simple P&L tracker to check out how you're going throughout the week. There's also time checks for gaming, all that sort of good stuff. A whole host of our customers are already using them. If you're not using them, definitely get involved. But this is wish we were there Wednesday, isn't it? We just want to get to the festival now. Some people are calling yesterday Super Tuesday. We all know, racing fans know next Tuesday is really Super Tuesday. So we've got a lot to look forward to. 28 races, we're not going to cover all the mirror, but we're going to get a line share of them through, that's for sure. Absolutely, and we've really slimmed this down. So as I said earlier, it's only going to be strong opinions on this show. Uh, let's get stuck straight in. Day one, the Supreme. Uh, obviously, we are recording this on Wednesday, just after midday on Wednesday. So of course, we still don't quite know what's going to run where. But Barry, let's kick off with you for the Supreme and the market. How's it looking? Yeah, well, at the moment, Ballyburn is odds-on favourite. This is a non-runner money-back market. On the exchange, he's a three-to-one chance. So the exchange has been telling us in the last couple of days that Ballyburn is probably going to run in what's now the Gallagher Novice Hurl, was the Baron Bing, and was the Neptune, was the Sun Alliance, whatever it's called now, it's the Gallagher's now. Yeah. So the market's suggesting he's going to go there. Four to five in the sports book. Like I said, non-runner money-back there. Mystical Power has been really strong for J.P. McManus and Willie in the last couple of days into 7-2 to two, along with Firefox Tully Hill, Willie Mullins inmate in there at 4-1. So it's all centres around Ballyburn really. But that's really interesting in regards to Mystical Power. I'm going to kick off with you Daryl here because we were talking pre-show. He's a horse who I'm fascinated by because it's very clear that the team don't really have a handle on how good he could be. Yeah, definitely. There's a couple in here like that. One in the same owner colours, Jericho de Repineau, who Tony will probably touch on. But, yeah, we don't know how good he could be. What he did in the Moscow Flyer was really quite impressive. Speed in a way, like he did there, trapping down to the last hurdle at about 34 miles an hour, I think. Really showed a bright turn of foot. And the steps that he's taken in three starts have been really big leaps of improvement. So, 
Um, but look, if, if Ballyburn does come in here, I think he'll take a while to beat, and he's the standout novice of the season. Um, look, he's a short, he's short enough price, but this, this looks an ideal task for him, a strongly run supreme, high cruising speed. His RPR of 158 at the DRF was the same as what Marine Nationale recorded when he won this race. Wow. And it's been better than the last 10 winners in their prep runs. Wow. So he really is a standout novice. Um, but again, he's got options. I would be looking to keep Mystical Power on side if Ballyburn went the other way. Yeah. But at the moment, it would be Ballyburn for me. Interesting. TC, this is a market, the Supreme, that we've had many different favourites of throughout the season. Me and you have obviously covered that plenty on Wade In and Racing Only Better over the last few months. Is this market how you expected it to be right now with a week to go? Well, as it's non one and money back, it's still a very, very cloudy market. Now, you've got Ballyburn here at four to five. As, as Barry said, you just don't know where he's going to go. And we've just had the five-day confirmations in uh, just before we we're doing this and Willie's still got five of the first eight in the market now and we've also it's the, the money's a you know, the waters are further muddy by the fact is if Ballyburn comes here one of the other favorites Slade Steele is going to avoid him so um I look to the I think because Willie won't run all five of his all five of his you know top eight in the market um I think Jericho de Repine, I mean, I've been very negative about this horse all year. I mean, if you remember, he won an egg and spoon race at Newbury early in the year. And I think one firm made him three to one favourite of the Supreme, which was laughable because he <laughs> tends elsewhere. But now he got nearer to it. You know, he, he knuckled down a bit, you know, at uh, Doncaster. The form's OK. I think they just think he's got a... They think, they think the world of him, they think a big, big field, which he's probably not going to get, but he's likely to get a stronger, stronger pace than he got at Doncaster. And I think given the shape of the race, I think the current seven to one each way free places with the sportsbook, I think it's a fair investment. Oh, that's interesting. Bit of a U-turn on him in terms of the original view anyway. Yeah, I mean, like, like I said, he, he was basically, he's a bigger price now uh, as he was when he won his first two at Newbury. And he's improved since. Um, and, and the field is shortening all the time and could even sh shorten further. Okay. On we roll to the Arkle, Barry. And, of course, this had a huge change-up courtesy of No Marine Nationale. And now we've got basically co-favourites, have we, of three, is it, at yeah, this stage? Yeah, again, it's a Willie wreck your head. What's he going to run? The Gaelic <laughs> Warrior in here, a 4-1. to one. L.A. and Tom is a 4-1 to one chance. Found a 50 for Gordon in there, a 4-1. to one. Five Hunters, Yarm, Fasal Vega, 5-6, Quilixios. Uh, Rachel Blackmore's right, Calixios. That's come in for really good support in the last 48 hours or so. Had been as big as 10 and 12. Um, be interesting to hear what she has to say about that later on. But uh, it's probably the most open Arkle in quite some time. When you say open Arkle, Kev, does that mean a bit of a rubbish renewal? Um, <laughs> a bit, uh, come no, on, you can I, say. I, I wouldn't you can say, say rubbish, it. but I might say uh, you know a little bit average looking. Um, and look. It, it's a really interesting race in fairness you might you could say there isn't a standout in there but like we have two very closely matched horses in founder 50 and Nilete Tomp representing grade one form and we're going to have two like essentially new horses coming in amongst that form line with Calixios and my mate Mozzie is going to run here now as well it seems so look there is a fair bit of intrigue for me I'm focusing on the grade one form I'm focusing on that Leopardstown form and my view is I think Ilete Tomps did well to, to run down Founder 50 that day. I thought Founder 50, um, like in terms of the, 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 the way the race panned out, the pace of the race, I thought he had every opportunity to go and win. Ilete Toms came from a little bit further back and, and I feel he did well to run him down. I know you can look at Ilete Toms' previous runs at Cheltenham and maybe poke at him a little bit, but I think he's just a better chaser. And the way the race is likely to pan out, I don't think the, the track is gonna suit Founder 50 as well for all that he did look a little bit more professional the last day. Like, I don't think there's much between them. The market tells you that, but I'd be with Ilete Tom to uphold that form. Found a 50 blew out when he came over to Anktree last year, didn't he? Mm, like, he's definitely not straightforward, but in fairness, he, he made such a good step forward from his penultimate start to his last start in terms of, you know, jumping out to the right, and he just looked a bit more straightforward. I mean, straightforward. He, let's, we can say it, we can call it how he is. He looked like a dog two starts back. Well, you know, look, he's, qu he's quirky. <laughs> He's quirky, and look, and look, the old course can punish this, the type of things that he was doing, so I'd be, that, that, that feeds into the view, but I think, look, who's a better horse? I think Elete, Elete Toms is, is a little bit better than him, and it might be accentuated around this course and this. One, one thing about him I would say, there is a very strong word that traveling really, he doesn't take it well at all, and, and that's one of the reasons why he's kind of underperformed 
in Cheltenham on those two it's occasions. Called Nicky Henderson syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> um, Long old trip, as I can vouch for. Tony, Tony Calvin, how are you playing the Arkle with um, the prices as they are right now? I think Hunter John's very interesting. Uh -huh. um, intre uh, there's been a lot of money for JPR1, so we might even get a, um, a UK winner of this race, and I can half see that, but I think Hunter John, I think he was going to beat a good horse when he fell out the last against Safar uh, Fairy House. Um, he made an absolute haulix of the second last uh, next time up, and he still won well. And, and although the, the second horse hasn't won this year, uh, path the route, he is a very, very decent handicapper who ran really well in defeat of the DRF. So he won off a yard, though, was he that day? <laughs> <laughs> he won, was he? He was he was looking for a handicap know, but, next time out, wasn't he? I know, but you know, Hunter John won with his head in his chest five lengths. You know, just like taking the second last home with him. So I think. There's always, a, there's always a mistake in Hunter's Yards, it seems, and that was pretty much the same over hurdles. But it's always a very big if. But if, if Hunter's Yard puts in a decent clear round, uh, I think he could be up there. But it's, it's a devilishly hard race. OK, it's a tricky race, as is really the champion hurdle if you're looking to have a bet, because, of course, State Man now, the clear-cut favourite for this. Obviously, no Constitution Hill. But we've had a bit of a change, a bit of a surprise. Uh, new recruits the champion hurdle market is that right Barry today that's right yeah just in the last couple of hours we've had the Beth Fair hurdle winner and Birico Lord supplemented Barry by... securing his bonus there by getting the Beth Fair <laughs> hurdle in I'm contractually obliged to mention a Beth Fair sponsorship of a horse's won it and we're mentioning it in conversation <laughs> but uh, no he's been supplemented uh, by the JP McManus team they obviously think he's a horse improved and he's going in the right direction so why not He's only got state man to take on. They'd get the supplementary feedback if he finishes in the place first four quite easily. So, yeah, I think it's a punchy enough decision from the four to nine statement at the moment. Um, Irish point that could potentially go here as opposed to the stairs hurl if he was even going to run the stairs hurl. Uh, he's 8.4 on the exchange. Lossy Mout is in here as well, 12.5 on the exchange. So it's state man's to lose, really. It is, TC, isn't it? Mm. But I know you're not going to sit on this panel and just tell us the back statement at what is he, one to three currently. So how are you playing it? Well, I actually don't think, you know, if, if, you, if you can get some forward, I know it's exchange, it's all in. But I think he's looking at that race. I think he's, he, he's a fours on shot. So if you are so minded, and you know, obviously people are out there uh, that, that do play that way, I wouldn't necessarily put them off, but there's nowhere in the world that I, I would... I would, I would personally better those kind of odds. The Iberico Lord is very, very interesting because this horse needs uh, soft ground. And we should mention the going. Um, the going is currently soft to heavy uh, as we speak here. Um, and it's a, drying, it's a drying few days, but Saturday and Sunday, there's a due another 12 mil. And it's really striking that the going stick readings uh, that, they, that came out on Tuesday night suggest it's, it's soft to heavy and some as well. The cross-country course is 2.9, which is basically a swimming pool. <laughs> uh, the old course is 3.6, and the new course is 4. Now, that is soft heavy, so we should bear that in mind, and that's probably why, with that rain forecast at the weekend, that's probably why they've come here with a Virico Lord. And I think if it remains soft to heavy, or even soft, on Champion Hurdle Day, I think Virico Lord, that's... I was, we were, I was amazed when, when the betting opened up after the supplementary stage today. That 25s, 20s, 16s, I can see it's easily going off third favourite behind, behind State Man and Irish Point. So, yeah, Iberico Lord, they think the world of it. It's only rated 143, but his form trajectory, once he gets soft ground, is, is something to behold. So, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if he finished second to State Man, Iberico Lord. Okay, TC, very interested in the supplementary entry then. Uh, let's play a game of back or lay, guys. I think you guys out here should have these cards, our live audience. Oh, you do. Look at you, enthusiastic lot. There. Under your seats, back or lay. Here we go. State man. Yeah, get ready. Have you, have you got one, Daryl? <laughs> no. 
Okay, right. Well, why don't you have? Why don't you have mine? Okay, you can do it together. Do That's it. cute. We're be doing the you same can rip here. it apart. Don't we um, do this? Whole, isn't when they go down under? Isn't there a program? They go like yeah, that and say, yes, "Stay or go." Yeah, yeah, stay or go. Change your life or don't. And then the um, husband right. says, "Stay." And the, yeah. the wife here we go. No, state man, state man in the champion hurdle. Are we backing or are we laying? Of course, we're. <gasps> oh, there's a difference. Of course, we're backing. That's Who the beauty there of the exchange laying? right there. Look at There's some lunatics in the crowd. That's what Come makes on. the exchange. It's a difference of opinion. Perfect. Oh, our boss man's a lunatic as well. That's interesting. Uh, and you employed me for a reason. Right. Let's do any other business on day one, guys. Obviously, I should just point out, we're doing the main races. But, of course, we do have all the daily shows coming for you uh, throughout the Cheltenham Festival week. I'll be with these guys again. And in those shows, we'll be giving strong opinions on every race, I would imagine, one way or another. But right now, a week out, any other business, the boys have some uh, horses they want to flag up. So, Kev, I will start with you with the Ultima. The Ultima, I actually really fancy Giovinco in here for Lucinda Russell's yard. I think he's a big enough price, sort of roughly double figures just about at this stage. I'll be sticking with him, hopefully. Um, but you do have a view in it as well. I do. Uh, I do like the gaffer. Oh, yeah. Um, trained Second by part. Gordon Elliott. Yeah, like the cheesy around some <laughs> race in the last year now. Um, it, it was a messy old race, I'd say. Russell would love to have had another go at it. He made up a lot of ground in a short space of time between the fourth last and the third last. Was that when he was having a shocker? Yeah, it was in amongst it, yeah. yeah, yeah. It got One of many. got that, worse that as the week. That was part of the Davy Russell shocker. <laughs> it yeah. got worse as the week went on. Yeah. But um, it, well, it wasn't the worst now, but if it, it's one of those with hindsight. He, he made up a lot of ground probably in the, in the hottest part of the race, and he was still banged there at the last. Just a little bit weak up the run in, but... Like it's worked out to be probably one of the stronger handicaps to run at the Cheltenham Festival for a little while now, you yeah. know, car grambler beating fast or slow. Um, it's worked out really well. Look, they know exactly what to do. They've trained them, really target trained them for the race. He won, um, he won a charity race for stable staff there um, a month or so ago, um, which would be a lovely confidence booster for him. <laughs> and um, yeah, look, he's, he's, he's two pounds lower. I think the case is really clear and it's easy to understand why he's up at the front end of the market. Beautiful. Okay, the gopher then in the ultimate for Kev. Um, Daryl, what about the Boodles? Tricky little race, but you've got an early confidence shout, have you? I've got a couple in there that I quite like. One Go of them on. is Palamon uh, for Paul Nolan. A uh, horse off the flat from Richard Hannon was uh, one at York on the flat and it before going to Paul Nolan's. Was approaching the mark of 80. Three quiet runs, but he's caught the eye in, in all three. The latest was at Nace when he was held up at the rear of the field. Came circled the entire field, got to the front and they thought, hold on, we've got here a bit too quick here. And it was all animation. <laughs> Look, he's definitely been looking for a handicap, Mark. The winner of that NACE race was Nadawi, who was given a rating of 134. Well, Palamon's been given 121 uh, and he's rated on the flat, so there's definitely scope for improvement of that, Mark. The other, just to give a good mention to, is Nada um, Nara in oh, the yeah. uh, J.P. McManus colours. This horse actually won the corresponding race that Sergino won in France. Um, the, the Phillies version. Um, the Phillies ain't got a great record in this race, but <laughs> she won it really, really well. She's been given a couple of quiet rides and uh, an opening mark of 126. Now, just on the history of those sort of races over in France, you'd think that she'd have a lot more to come. Okay, a couple of pokes then for the Boodles, like that. And you too, Tony. You want to get stuck into the juveniles as well? Uh, I've just put, it's, it was trading at over 200 on the exchange last time I looked. There's a Nigel Twistle Davis mm -hmm. horse called Lay Loyo. Um, it was um, been running since March 2023, so ex-French got lots of experience on, on his win on his win there last year. He looks very very interesting. But I asked around, and apparently he's going to have um, they've got entry as his main target, as opposed to um, uh, Cheltenham, which is uh, a little bit disappointing. Um, so yeah, but have a look out for that. I, I think he could be quite well handicapped. Um, I apparently Davy Russell has been. If he did have punters, if he, he'd been putting him in on the goffer. Uh, he, so that would be a positive for Kev there. Uh, but the one uh, I do like, um, well, I, I'll qualify it slightly because Gordon Elliott, Sal was all Ziggy. I've been quite keen on that. I mean, I put up on, on when we did Wade in Footsteps for the festival, it was sevens each way then. Uh, it's now into fours. Uh, but I just think he's got the similar level of form uh, to the front two in the market on his Limerick uh, National second, um, second in the attempt, so obviously everyone knows how important Chester Cheltenham Festival form is, but the one issue is, and he's been trained for the race, but the one issue is apparently he bled the last time we saw him, so, and that was in October. So 
whether it's by accident or design, he's coming here off a massive long break. Um, I'm not so sure, but um, on, on pure form and in the shape of the race, you know, the Salvador Ziggy, the each way angle it is, it, if not filthy, it's slightly dirty. Dirty in the National Hunt chase. Go on, Barry, because this is a market that's a lot of people are quite interested in. Those top two people are really sort of going Corbett's Cross or Embassy Gardens. Where does Betfair sit with this? Yeah, well, this is our first of our four odds boosts for the show. Um, we are odds boosting Embassy Gardens from 9 to 4 to 11 to 4. So watch out for that. T's and C's apply, but uh, that's the first of our four odds boosts in the National Hunt Chase. It's a, it's a tricky race. And that, that's a pretty punchy odds boost for Embassy Gardens. I'd say keep boosting away. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm against the front two here for different reasons. Like Corbett's Cross, loads of talent, but like it's a Cheltenham preview, you're supposed to say kind of bombastic things. Like I think he jumps like a snooker table, doesn't he? Oh. Um, but he, he's, <laughs> no, he's, he doesn't. he's very inconsistent. Like he's very inconsistent. He's a very frustrating. For me uh, personally, I find him very frustrating. I think he's got an abundance of talent. Yeah. I love him to look at. I love his connections. But he is starting to become a bit of a cliff horse for me now. I know he was unfortunate the other yeah, day. Yeah, it but, wasn't oh. his fault. He hasn't done he, a lot wrong. Like no, They've been trying changed. to settle in this season. If you remember last year over hurdles, particularly mm. in that Albert Bartlett, he was tanking around. Mm. You know, he tanked all over him, the Albert Bartlett, backed into nine to four. This season, they've just dropped him in, tried to let him settle, teach him. Yeah, if you let's watch not spend the, 20 minutes talking about the National Hunt Chase well, now. There's some decent it, races. Look, to Corbett's too. Cross is a, is, a, is a stonking bit on day one, I think. Uh, I, think no, I, well I think they're team. trying to put the old square peg into the round hole. Like, I just don't nah. think it's the race for him. He doesn't, okay. A lot of jumping. You need to settle. Embassy Gardens, for me, races too freely as well. I'd be wor worried about him settling well enough. And um, I was with Salvador Ziggy as well. And the preparation wouldn't really bother me. They sent him straight to Cheltenham last year off a, you know, a big winter break. And... He ran great in the, in the Pertemps final, so uh, I'll put my faith in Gordy, and uh, yeah, I, I like him. So you're all with Salvador Ziggy? No, 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 oh, no Corbett's Cross. Oh, sorry, you're yeah. Corbett's Cross. I love that. He hasn't done very much wrong. He literally threw himself on the floor when about to win a grade one. He did as much wrong as you can do. <laughs> all right, yeah, that, well, that gap shouldn't have been there, should it? I <laughs> blame <laughs> the gap, that's yeah. it. Yeah. So you're Corbett's Cross. Quick line on him before we move on. He's just, a, he's just a progressive horse. He's the classiest horse in the race. They've been teaching him to settle with a view to this race long term. Um, he jumped perfectly fine down the back at Leopardstown when he was really asked to go. Derek O'Connor will be on, decent jockey. He's the best horse in the race by a distance. Hey, look, I, as I said, I think he's talented, but he's starting to become my cliff horse. Right, on to day two we go. Barry, let's kick off with you here because, of course, we do have another odds boost. And this is probably a more competitive day in terms of the markets as well. Is that fair to say on day two? Well, we're kicking off with the Gallagher on day two, and uh, we've got Ballyburn in there, who's currently four to six in the exchange. Obviously, again, it's uh, non-runner money back there. Our odds boost is factor file in the brand advisory was four to five. What's odds on is 11 to 10 against now, so that, again, is a pretty bunchy odds boost. I know a couple of the panel members like that, but in the Gallagher's, obviously, mystical power, four to one, nine to two, Illegal Antiques, Slade Steel is in there at five to one. Again, another Rachel Blackmore ride. Looks wide open. If Ballyburn goes here, goes off odds on. If it doesn't go here, Mystical Power, Illa Atlantique or Slade Steel could go off. Did you say Ballyburn's currently four to six on the exchange? Ballyburn, up four to six on the sports book. Right. Non-runner money back. Uh, what price handstands, Barry? On the exchange, 11 to 10. Sorry? What price Ben Pauling's handstands? Hand Any price you want. Is in there at about <laughs> 10 on the exchange. 18 on the exchange. Right. Interesting. I, I quite like him in here, but I just feel like you've got to give a shout to a UK horse. Uh, Daryl, I will start with you here, please, for the Gallagher then. You've just heard the market there. Obviously, so much uncertainty. It goes without saying. But do you have one in here that you really like? Yeah, yeah I like Mystical Power. I said to you, I've been oh, with yeah, him yeah. wherever he goes. I think Step Up and Trip will help him with his jump, and he's, he's by Galileo. You know, they, they, they say that they, they run through walls for you, but don't ask him to jump a fence. But... <laughs> His jumping's been okay, but I just think at a slower pace in, in the, Ballymore, in the uh, Gallagher, sorry, it, it would just help him. This race really lends itself to a horse that can get down and show a turn of foot on that bend for home, get his head down and sprint away. And, and that's yeah. what I think Mystical Power will do. It'll bre bread to stay. Look, I think Il Atlantique is a horse that's probably going to go off favourite. He'll be pulled down in his choice. I think he's a galloper. He's been beaten at odds of 1.11, 1.64, and 1.01 in three of his last four runs. Wow. Yeah. Wow, so that's like, some stuff. And he's having an extra furlong with a stiff finish at Cheltenham. I mean, I wouldn't trust Ooh. him to get the job yeah, done personally. One won the bumper in Nace one day, yeah. Yeah, you know, so short, like, short and I think, I think this, horse, this race lends itself to a horse with a turn of foot. 
that horse for me is mystical power. I don't think it's a deep race, to be honest. No. So your ideal, clearly, is that Ballyburn goes supreme, mystical power goes here. Yeah. 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 We will see if that comes to fruition. Tony, what about you and the Gallagher? Um, one, of my strongest, one of my strongest bets, as it stands at the moment, is Jinko Blue, 20 to 1 each way. Um, now, this horse is a big improver, um, and he does need to step up again, but... Um, you know, he, he was beaten by personal ambition first time up, and obviously that's worked out pretty well. Showed a good attitude to win a, to beat a subsequent winner at Newbury. Then he went to Sandown last time, albeit off mark of 124, and he absolutely danced in. Um, now, he won by six lengths there, and a handicap has actually stuck him up 16 pounds for a mark of 140, which seems ridiculous. But when you dive into it, you know, it's probably justified, because the second and fifth have come out and won well since and the third and, third and fourth haven't, haven't, haven't been seen since. So on what we know, that was a very strong, that was very strong handicap performance. It was backed up by the clock as well. Now, I do know the jockey, Nico de Boinville, he, he didn't ride him last time, it Bowen rode him last time, but they have got some doubts about his jumping. But I went back and had a look at that uh, Sandown race again this morning, and you know, the, you know, the further he went, the better he jumped and the stronger he looked. Um, I think Jinko Blue, even though obviously Mullins has got you know the battalions in here, I think uh, an improver Jinko Blue twenties each way is um, I think he's a very decent bet. Okay, on we go then to the Brown Advisory. So looking forward to this. If the sort of novice hurdlers I feel haven't really sort of don't doesn't feel like there's a standout star. I feel like there are some real top notches in the novice chase division. And one of those top notches I feel and have been banging on about is Factorfile, who's a very short price favorite here for the Brown Advisory. Kev, I shall start with you here. This is a more formed market because we know we're going to see Factorfile. Very odd for Willie Mullins to give such an early shout to horse with dual entries, but he has confirmed that this is where Factorfile will go. Stay Away Faye will obviously show up here. Monty Starr only has one entry and Broadway Boy is now being confirmed for this race as well. So we have a little bit more of a firmed up market here, but let's just be honest about it. Nothing beats back to file. <laughs> yeah, really good race this. It's the, it's the highest <coughs> quality of the, the novice chases for sure. Like might only have five or six runners, but like you say, the front three, four, are properly Belters, good. proper horses. Yeah, like fact to file, I've been slow to come around to him, as you know, like yeah. uh, I wasn't in love with him the first two days, but last time, you know, I've, ironically, like the race where people would say you learned the, le the, the least about him because it was only a two runner non event, but I saw an awful lot of progression in his, in his jumping, in his general demeanor. I was just quite surprised that they committed to the Brown Advisory. Like to me, he looks like a Turner's horse. Um, but, I, but do you see that as a positive rather than a negative? If you see what I mean, that they were so yeah, committed in yeah. a way. Like they, they seem to be in no doubt. Um, they don't always get it right, but um, like I think he is the, the classiest horse in the race, mm. and I, I would be terrified of him um, <laughs> as a big fan of Monty Starr. Um, have been from the get-go. Um, really liked him last year, like a cliche, like, but he's, like, he's, he's very particularly big individual and being trained by Henry, you'd always hope that he'd drive on and, you know, he's a half brother to um, Mana Lee, you know, who really drove on as a chaser and I just love the way he jumps fences, he makes okay. it look really easy, he's just what you'd like for, for a staying chaser, like he's really efficient, um, stays really well. Um, look, does he have the class of fact to file? We'll get to find out on the track, but he's a horse I really love. It's been the, the plan to have two runs over fences and go straight there, just like he did with Manila Indo. And uh, while it's a, it's a very spicy race, um, I'm now going to stay on board the train with Monty Starr. Uh, what price is Monty Star Barry, in the market then? Uh, Monty Star is nine on the exchange and four on the sportsbook. Okay. Behind the horse that you're scared of, fact to file. Well, I'm afraid to stay away Faye as well, to be honest. But, well, and uh, also, yeah. <laughs> I, I should just point out that I was down at Paul Nichols's on Monday. That content will be coming out on Betfair's digital platforms, obviously. And Paul, as always, does a really insightful interview about a few of his runners in these grade ones, particularly interesting on this stay away Faye. I'm just going to leave that there for you to click over on YouTube and go watch that interview because it'll be out by now. Um, Fact to file, you're with him, Daryl. You're not mad, right? You're not yeah, bonkers. Yeah, like he's very, very good, isn't he? He's broke the clock, the clock the last twice. You know, he's he's been really impressive. I know people are say all he's done is one time trials, but Jesus, there have been some time trials. You know, like he he's jumping at, at speed has been really, really impressive for me. When I look at a Brown Advisory or any of the novice chases, I kind of look at right. I want a horse that I know would be able to win both races. 
Okay. So I don't look at Stay Away Faye and think he could win the Turners. I don't look at Monty Star and think he could win a turn. Or I look at, board, or, board yeah, board. you know, I look at I look at um, Fact Far and think he'd win any of those two races he ran in. Mm. And for me, that's a sign of a classy horse. So certainly with Fact Far, yeah, I'll be looking to place lay Monty Star. Oh wow! Yeah. Ooh, that's Might only be two places now. In fairness, yeah, yeah, yeah. spicy <laughs> market, spicy yeah. views, like yeah. it. Um, are you also scared of Fact Far TC? Um, no, it's an interesting story here. Now, I don't mind upsetting people, as you know, and I don't mind. I being, am fully aware of and that. And I don't mind being yeah. indiscreet, and I might get, uh, I might get tapped up for this. Um, but you mentioned Willie Mullins being very uncommon in in committing factor file to this race so far out. Yeah. Now, I hear a rumour uh -oh. that Willie Mullins wants to run fact of file in the Turners. And that's where he was aiming towards. And then someone told him three, uh, two weeks ago, which is when Willie came out and said, it's definitely going for the Brown, that JP's had a lump on for the Brown, and I don't care where you're going, this horse is going for the Brown where I've had my money. And I think if any owner in Willie Mullins' yard can not tell him what to do, but steer him aggressively towards a target it would be JP McManus and that would be a similar case I would imagine with wherever JP's got his horses whether it be Nicky Henderson whatever so and there is a school of thought that says fact to file isn't a copper bottom stayer so just bear that in mind if you are taking a short price and there, there is one thing to that is that I think Willie's only horse that he, he went from bumpers straight over the fence with was it Florida Florida Pearl, 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 I did, yeah. did it with um, Miss yeah. that as well yeah that Florida Bell went to the Brown Advisory, mm. you know, I haven't run over the middle trip. That's so. before the Turners existed. Mm. Oh, back in, back in the, back in the, 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 back in the good old days. Oh, back don't in the, back don't in get me going old. about the good old days. <laughs> You'd walk straight into a heavyweight yeah, yeah. right hand there. And yeah. You did, yeah. actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, apart from that, so I'll, I should add allegedly to that story. But yeah. I was going to say, because, you know, we're all it's about facts on this show. There. Oh, not, you know, well, yeah. if, if anybody wants to come, I'll give you my address. <laughs> I'll make sure we, I'm we not like there. We facts, like facts, not fiction, please. Uh, but that is an interesting rumour, and, yeah. We will see. Back to Farlo. I love him. I'm all here for it. Do you think, do you think the stamina is an issue? Do we think that? I, 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 I'm, with Kev, I'm with Kevin's yeah. thought that a good horse, a really good horse, and they see him as a Gold Cup horse for the future, he could win over two and a half, he could win over three. I'm not worried about it. Frank Hall could have won the ledger then, yeah? <laughs> Something like that. Yes, TC. Something like, like that. Like after a second start, I said, OK, you're, you're, your jumping will be better suited to longer. But then, like, he, he was so much more aggressive and into the bride than, like, like, Gaelic Warrior was trapping along and, like, he wasn't going quick enough for, for fact of files. That, that changed my opinion a bit on him. Like, he looked so much sharper, but look, we'll see. But it would be, I, it, it would be one of the little things niggling in my mind as well now. Okay, on we go, guys. Uh, Queen Mother Champion chase time. And, of course, uh, El Fabiolo, who's been a long-standing favourite for this off the back of what he's done basically all season and all his novice season as well. He's doing so little wrong. Yes, we know he can clonk a fence. Like, that's the stick people used to beat him with. But he's never looked like falling, and he looks like a cut above. And he's the horse in here that all season, as I said, has done very little wrong. Because in behind him is John Bond, who, of course, blotted this copybook when we last saw him. Edward Stone got back on track but had been such a big disappointment. But, my God, he was good when we... Last saw him at Newbury. And then Captain Guinness, we know, isn't good enough. And Elixir the Nuts, if he wins this, well, I'll just be leaving Charlton with my head in my hands, Barry. <laughs> Captain Guinness, not good enough to win this. No, but could be placed again this year. Rachel famously had 500 quid each way oh, yeah, last yeah. year for charity. Yeah, 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 and a place. So, and I'm sure you yeah. won't say that to her when you're interviewing her later no, I'll on. Cha I'll change my tone completely <laughs> Completely, I'm not mad about that. <laughs> yeah. This is a fascinating race. El Fabiolo, he's a, he's a serious horse, isn't he? Like, yeah. we all know what he's done. He is, has a very important quality for a racehorse jumping fence, is self-preservation. Yeah. He hasn't fallen yet. <laughs> he gets there, he gets the job done. He's got a serious engine. It's hard to see him get beat. John Bond will be second, and Edward Stone could make the run and finish third. I can't see, any, I, I can't see anything outside of those three winning this race. Okay, Tony, um, it's been a changing market in behind El Fabiolo and what he's done. How are you playing the champion chase? Um, I'll leave the exchange angle to Kev. I think, I, think he's got, I think he's got a way into this, his own way into this. Oh. I'll, take, I'll take another ish. I'll take a, a different stance. I'll take a fixed odds stance on here. Now, and 
I can see the angle for Edwardstone after that win last time went from the front, but it's interesting. Would he be able to go out in front, get a breather in into himself, and then kick on again in this kind of company? He's not going to have the surprise tactics he had. At the not only the surprise tactics, but is he going to have? You know, he was running against 140 odd rated Fun and Ball Sibyl last time, and and Boot Hill. They're not the same class of horse as El Fabiolo and John Bond. If they want to close up to Edward Stone and take him on, he's in big trouble. He, he's got blowout potential. So the way I, and, and obviously ha, as has John Bond, for El Fabiolo, you know, they've all got a mistake in their locker. Um, but I do think El Fabiolo, he's like, you know, he's like a drunk who wakes up in bed, you know, in their own bed the next morning. They're not sure how they get there, but they get there. <laughs> It's cut, it's, um, but, but so the way I'm playing it is Betfair Sportsbook have got a without Fabiolo market. Captain Guinness is eight to one, a quarter, one, two. Now, if I think Edward Stone's got blowout potential if he goes, tries to make the running again against much better horses, if I think John Bond's got some blowout potential because of his mistakes, and now he's, he's you know, he, his overall body of work doesn't really convince me, but Captain Guinness who has got a great body of work here. I mean, I went back and had a look at his 2020 Supreme run. He was absolutely tanking when he got brought down for Alexia Dane. Um, he's finished third in an Arkle. He finished second to an Ergamine last time. And I'm hoping he chases home the favorite again this time around. Um, so for me, I think Captain Guinness, eight to one each way, a quarter one to the sportswork is a very, very good bet. There's only one other firm that I can see that have priced up that market and they are two points short at sixes, so that's, that's the play in the race. There's the quiz question. What was the horse that jumped right and took out all those horses in that Supreme? Elixir Dene. What Was it? Yeah. Oh, what did you think it was? I had it in my head. It was a, a woolly horse, possibly. No, I, I went back and I then love this. Daryl walked into yours. You've walked into Tony's. <laughs> no, I'm going to double. I'm going to double check that. <laughs> yeah. um, did you, uh, Kev? Did you have a way to play this on the exchange? That what TC was um, saying? No, I was being a bit playful the other day. It had like a, you, I wouldn't think you're nuts if you laid the front two and right. look for an absolute beano, <laughs> just because the two of them have the potential to um, to headbutt one. Um, like from a pace perspective, if, if Gentleman Demi runs like he's got no brakes, mm -hmm. you know, in the same ownership <laughs> as John Bon, like I think they'll be happy for him to rock on and, um, and make it real end-to-end -end stuff. Um, finding that a very hard race to, to play. Captain Guinness can absolutely see the angle, whichever way you want to get into him. I think he'll be ridden the right way to outrun his price. So, like Tony says, there's options, you know, you know, straight each way, um, without markets, etc. That would probably be my way in, but um, it wouldn't be with any great conviction there. Okay, well, let's do an El Fabiolo play or lay then. Get your cards back out, guys. I'm going to be less judgmental oh, yeah, here yeah. than I was about State Bank, yeah. so I think I was a bit harsh there. So, El Fabiolo, are you playing him? Are you backing him or are you laying him? Uh, Jesus. Ooh. Yeah, that's surprising. Just yeah. bank winners. <laughs> I'm, I'm laying him for what it's worth. I'm oh. at Edward Stone. Yeah. 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 If, if, you, you if you are laying him, though, you're, you're hoping he makes a mistake. Oh, no, 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 very much so. Like, yeah. Is that, is yeah. that the, the correct way to it's bet? It's not. You know? No, no, but, no, you know. no room for sentimentality here. Sit it, here. Say, sit, like, sit it out. <laughs> we all like living in a fairy tale, but we don't. So that's that. No, very much hoping that he makes a mistake that obviously you never want a horse to fall, but I want him to make enough mistakes that he has the stuffing knocked out of him. Fair enough. And Edward Stone doesn't, basically. Um, guys, any other business on day two? We've obviously got a champion bumper, the cross country uh, the cross country race, the Coral Cup, Kev. Coral Cup? Yeah. Um, look, look, as always, like deeply competitive. But I, ha I haven't really heard anyone talking about Brazil, which is slightly oh, surprising. Yeah. Um, famously, the horse that you know resulted in the worst bad beat of all time for anyone that lashed into Gaelic Warrior after Mark he was off when he nipped him in the boodles, um, despite doing a, a fair bit wrong himself. Um, he, his last few runs have been a little bit low key, but um, I suspect that they, like with his pedigree and the way he shapes, like you'd be really hopeful that stepping up to a mid-range trip is, is going to be a help to him. And it just has the look of one where they're kind of waiting for the big day to step him up and trip. Um, like I say, no one's really been talking about him. Um, okay. 16s, 20s, I think. Um, of course, look, on the day, you'd love to see him be, be strong in the market, but... Mm. Uh, I didn't think he shaped it all badly last time over the two miles, and I just wouldn't be surprised if he came back to life on the big day. 
Lovely. Okay, and then one for the Grand Annual as well. Oh, Harper's Brook, my old pal, my oh, old friend. Oh, give over. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. You need God like, to be looking to, down on you for talk, him. Talk about setting yourself up for a fall. Yeah. Because he, he's notorious, this fella. He's infamous. He's, like, thrown to... You know, abs he was an absolute certainty up the run in, and he's you're just a forgiving lot on this panel. You tipping up Corbett's cross, he's done nothing wrong, throws himself on the floor. You tipping up Harper's Brook, like you've got to take a yeah, huge look at, leap of we're, faith. We're, with yeah, resources. we're going in with our eyes open with Harper's Brook, but you need to be, you need to have so much ability off your mark to, to put yourself in a position to do that. Mm. And I just really like the trip angle. Like they, they dropped him back to two miles last time. I think he jumps like a real two miler. They cheek pieces back on him the last twice. His jumping really sharpened. Like he's a bit, he's not fun to watch at a race from a jumping point of view because he's low and aggressive. So, you know, he'll be. Otherwise known as low and stupid. <laughs> he'll be an exciting watch. But I think that like the Grand Annual, if it's ever going to work for him on a big stage, like the Grand mm -hmm. Annual is the one. They'll go 100 miles an hour. They can hopefully wait and wait and wait as long as they dare. But I think he's, he's very workable off his mark. Um, ben Pauling um, has said they're probably going to put blinkers on him. Um, mm. Ben Pauling's in like such good form at the minute. He's having the season of he's all really seasons. He's really flying. And I, I really could see it. And look, he's shortened quite a bit. And he's getting shorter. But we've had a couple come out at the top end of the market, etc. And I think yeah. there might be one more to come out. And I just, like, I, I've climbed the board. I'm not getting off. Like, there's the scope for this to be an absolute, like, baddest, ugliest beat of all time if he does his party trick in the Grand Annual. But I just, I, I, I could see it. I really could. TC, you're nodding and agreeing on this one. I, I just, obviously, that's what the exchange is for, isn't it? I mean, sticking in a, a short in running late on that. There'd be some queue. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you might have to go for about four to one to get it in, mightn't you? Um, I, I would say um, I heard this morning, I spoke to somebody this morning, apparently Keelan Woods is telling everybody they absolutely think it's absolutely tailor-made for that, uh, that kind of performance. The blinkers angle, um, if they do switch headgear, Ben Pauling's two from 38 with, with first-time blinkers, but but then again, if you think a horse is going to respond to it, it may well be that one. Uh, and I, I was too busy giving Scarlett's inaccurate gossip out earlier before. And, and I, I neglected, <laughs> but we love it, TC. We I, love I, it. I know, I know. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I, I neglected to mention that my actual fancy in the race, which is Sandor Clegane, each way in that race. It's, I think if you, uh, I think there's 20s knocking around. Um, he's shorter elsewhere. But I just think third in the Albert Bartler, I thought he shaped really well against Embassy Gardens last time. He was on the far side, he was detached from Embassy Gardens. I don't think he was ideally positioned. And I just think, you know, Paul Lowen's been targeting this since that, that run in late Jan. And I think he was an each way angle. And as Kev said, uh, you know, that race could be less than eight runners. So the free places of the sportsbook now could be an angle there, even though American Mike is due to be uh, supplemented into that race uh, on, on Thursday. Okay. All right, interesting stuff then. Let's roll on to day three. I'm just about keeping the show on the road in terms of timing, so we will keep going at this fast clip. Uh, Barrio, let's kick off with you here for day three. What odds boost do you have for us, for we, starters? We have in this stayers hurdle, Tiupu is uh, 7 to 2 from 11 to 4. Lovely. Just, yeah. Okay, and then you can go straight into the Turner's market for me, please, because, of course, we've been talking about novice chases in regards to the Brown Advisory, but this is just as fascinating. Obviously, as discussed, Fact File has both options, very much expecting him to be over further, but we know this is a confirmed um, spot for Ginny's Destiny, who's pretty much the most improved horse in training this season, I think it's fair to say, and he is top of the market for the old bet for Ambassador Paul Nichols, Barry. Uh, Ginny's Destiny's five to two. Factophile is in here still, obviously, like the lad yeah. said. He's uh, six to four. Five to two, Ginny's Destiny. Great Dawning looks like he'll come here. There's also a five to two chance. He looks probably the best British novice chaser. Seven to two, Fasal Vega, Gaelic Warrior, seven to two. Sorry, just a correction. Uh, 11 to four from, from two to one mm. in the stairs hurl. For Tiupu. For Tiupu, yeah. Got you. We'll go back over that when we get to the stairs hurdle. Yeah. Um, let's kick on with the turners. Daryl, this one's for you. Um, I, I do love a load of horses in here. For me, I'd love to see Fasal Vega stepped up to this trip. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> Go on, tell me I'm mad. Go on. I mean, I'm giving you an even madder selection in Gaelic Warrior. You, okay, you well, now you're the one. edges out to the right, yeah. but this horse has got some ability. Like, Gaelic got, Warrior on now. Yeah, Gaelic Warrior were on there, not Fasal Vega. <laughs> yeah, he's got some ability. He does edge out to the right. I thought it would be far more pronounced at Leopardstown uh, than it actually was which gave me a bit of encouragement. He just went far too hard that day. 
And for me, I was going back through his race and looking at him in a Ballymore. We finished second in the Ballymore last year too in Perret Pass. I didn't think he really sought out, the, sought out the trip. He did win over three miles at Punchestown at back end of last year, but they went so slowly. I'm not sure that was confirmed stamina at three miles, if you like. I think coming back in distance to this sort of trip on this new course where you're not always on the tight turn, I, like he's such a quick jumper. From A to B, he's very fast. And you look at the, the way Ginny's Destiny jumps, for example, I think he would be leaving these behind. Like if they had just allowed him to bowl on. It, it interests me greatly. Grey Dawning, if he doesn't come in here, Grey Dawning is the one I want to be on. I, I'm a massive fan of this horse. In fact, I'll tell you what is a great bet, actually. Grey Dawning to win the Betfair Chase next season. Uh, oh. that, that, that's, he's a great bet. He's a that. company man, isn't he? I am, I am Love indeed. Where are where, where the traders? Get us a price for that. Get us a price for that. But but look, I, want to, I need to see the final makeup of this field, but I'm yeah. leaning towards Gaelic Warrior. If not, I'm a massive Grey Dawning fan. To hit that fence like he did behind Ginny's Destiny and still run on, yeah. it's a sign of a very smart horse. Very smart horse, yeah, I'll give you that. Um, let's roll on to the raw and air. You've all got a view in this. And this, again, a really fascinating contest. El Fabiolo is obviously not going to run here, but then I'm behind him. You've got Bambridge, Envoy Allen, Stage Star. Um, further down, the likes of Phil Dore, who's had a positive mention on podcasts previously. Um, Barry, let's start by getting a picture of the market here. Yeah, I think in the exchange market, I think it's probably the best indication here because in the sports book, El Fabiola is in there yeah. at the head of the market, but again, on runner money back. Bambridge has been reserved at the head of the market by Envoy Allen. It's 5.1 Envoy Allen, 5.6 wow. Banbridge stage star, who I saw Harry Cobham speaking very positively about him during the week, is 5.5, uh, conflated in there at 9.4. So, be interesting to hear Kevin's thoughts on Banbridge. Yeah, let's get stuck in with you, Kev. Um, well, actually, all of you, I'm looking forward to this discussion because obviously we know they've been brave with Banbridge before in terms of not running him if he doesn't get his ground, but forecasts suggest that he will get his ground. But there's been a lot. Oh, no, TC's pulling a face. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. It look at. Well, how good does it have to get for him to run? He, he, I tell you what, this is Kev's, it's, it's going to be Kev's moment in the sun here, isn't it? He's going to be, he's going to be, he's going to be John Gosden like, he's going to be Aidan O'Brien like, he's going to, Kev's going to have his big stick alongside Joseph, go along and prodding on Thursday morning. Poking. I love it when they do that. It's just like hoping for the best, hoping for the best. Uh, look, look, it's a definite possibility he'll run, Vanessa. So. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It's a definite possibility. Go on, no, seriously, how good does it have to get for him to like run? I it, we have a bit more information in the pot than we did last year, I'd say, you know, because last year going into the Turners, you don't quite know how good he is. You hope he's good enough. Yep, yep. Um, know a bit more about him now, career best last time. Will Joseph be quite as disciplined with his decision? I, I Probably not, but look, at if it's soft, it's, it's going to be a problem, I'd say. Okay, um, if so soft if, is a problem, I, good to soft I, I suspect, you know, and the thing is, the other thing, last year he had to make a decision because it was the Turners, it was the first race of the day, he didn't get the benefit yeah. of, of having a race, whereas this year the Turners will be run, the jockeys will be able to come back in and, um, and give some feedback and we can look at the time of the race, etc. Ryanair's the third on the card and look, I know it's no good for anyone really for decisions to be made that late, but mm -hmm. look at, you know, We've been fairly uh, transparent with this situation from going back months, you know. So, yeah. uh, look, hopefully he runs because he's flying. Um, I think he's got a super chance. And, um, you know, it's, it's slightly, um, we can't control the weather. But look, looking at it by Thursday, hopefully it'll be fine. Fingers crossed it will, yeah. Um, TCL, shall come to you next. Yeah. Um, you're pulling a face there in terms of the sort of ground situation. But as yeah. Kevin's covered there, it's just, like, there's no point going over that. What will be, will be. Stay tuned for the daily shows because obviously we'll have more up-to-date facts on this. Yeah. But you tipped up Phil Dore a good while ago on Racing Only Better. Um, are you still with him at his current price? I thought this race would probably cut up more than it's likely to. Yeah. Uh, and the more I've looked at Phil Dore, I look at his two runs over two mile four and two mile five, that he only starts in excess of two mile one. And he's blown out on, on both occasions. And if it is, like I said, I come back to it, it's soft, heavy ground. There is rain forecasts on Saturday and Sunday. We all know Cheltenham traditionally dries out very, very quickly. But, you know, the water table is probably so high. I mean, you, every time you get on a train in this country, you just go through the countryside. You know, there's lakes everywhere where they shouldn't be. So I, I, I'd be worried about his stamina in that ground. Fugitive, I quite like because solid each way angle against that. But uh, Gordon Elliott, I think, uh, said yesterday... He's persuaded uh, Connections, the owners of Conflated, 
uh, to come here instead of was he in the cross country? Cross country Rightly yeah. so. I mean, ridiculous. Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, but when you look at when you look at his best form, conflated. He's got to be, you know, is he seventh with the sports book, did I see? Eight, yeah. He's eight, he's eight with the sports book, you know. And on his goal cut third, on a over more suitable trip, I mean, conflated is, is overpriced there. I mean, that eight is probably the best knocking around as well, I would have thought. Um, so conf I, I've come around to conflated. Um, yeah. Daryl, I find it very interesting that there's been quite a bit of confidence behind Envoy Allen. Of course, won the race mm. last year. I think we worked out in the cab on the way here that this is going to be his fifth Cheltenham Festival, I think. Yeah. And he's been pretty good to punters over the years. Only a few blots in his copy book. Yeah. Um, I'm be intrigued to hear from Rachel a little bit later about the form that he's in coming into this. Obviously, a year older. Stats don't really add up again uh, for him. Yeah. But he's got that abundance of class in here. Yeah, if like a classy horse like Envoy Allen, like if, if someone's going to defy the age stat that ten year olds have got a poor record, then it's He'd probably be going it. to be a horse yeah, yeah, like yeah. him, you know. Yeah. So you could probably argue the same case when we talk about the Gold Cup later on, being when people say Shishkin's too old. These classy horses, you know, they they seem to retain their ability. He's got a, he's got a massive chance. Envoy Allen's got a massive, massive, massive chance. Brilliant winner of the race last year, beaten Shishkin, hit man in behind. That form stood up at Newbury. Um, I'm actually going to back a horse that relates a little bit to that form, which is, um, I, I've, I've got to back Envoy Allen, but I'm gonna, I think Protectorat's too big, uh, uh, around 14 to 1. He's 10 on the sportsbook on the exchange, he's 14, uh, he, yeah. he, he, Any double figures price about him is too big, I think. He's dropping back in trip. He was fifth and third in the last two Gold Cups. Just don't, he's not quite that dour stayer, I mm -hmm. don't think, at the Gold Cup trip. Coming back in distance, Dan Skelton said that they're going to be aggressive with him, go from the front, so if... I think it's a bet now because if conditions are testing, that will definitely suit him. You'll see the favourite Banbridge come out of the race. I wasn't sure there was an abundance of pace in here. Right. I'm not too sure what Ahoy Senor is doing, whether he's going here or he's going to go to the Gold Cup. If he can, get, if he can take on Stage Star at the front and they'd be really aggressive with him, he could, be, uh, he could be one to definitely run into the frame. Whether he's good enough to outclass him by Allen and finish, I don't yeah. know, but he's a good each-way price. OK, protector at an each-way price and a constant nod for Envoy Allen. And we've basically named at least half the field there. So <laughs> fingers crossed, that's the winner for us. Uh, let's move on to the stayers, boys. Kev, I will start with you here. Um, of course, this is our odds boost with T.U. Poo. Just confirm that odds boost again, Barry. Yeah, T.U. Poo, 11 to 4 from 2 to 1. Wonderful. Then in behind, of course, we in the same colours, we're not expecting Irish Point to be here now. We're expecting to see him in the champion hurdle, as discussed. Grade 1 winner, Crambo, Noble exchange, Yates, national winner, Sir Gerhard, no, all, the, um, all the talent and ability. Flooring Porter, will he show up? Home by the lead for your man, Joseph O'Brien. So let's start there with you and him, maybe. Um, yeah, yeah, look, at front end of the market, I, I wouldn't put anyone off to you, Pooh, if you wanted to, um, if that end of the market suits you better. But um, look, I've been talking about home belief for a while and that the price is still big um the case remains the same um you can uh, i feel you can ignore his two runs this year they just went all wrong he just can't make the running um and nothing else would go on and he needs stamina so you know yeah. you try these things didn't work out um i'd be very happy ignoring it um his run of the race last year was excellent he made a horrendous really a race ending mistake on the first circuit and managed to be beaten only i think three and three quarters um going on at the line so, look, he's a horse that likes a bit of space in his races. You'd love him to get up handy and um, with a little bit of room, which might be asking a bit much, but um, he's, he's going to be sent there very fresh. He's absolutely bouncing. Um, might well have blinkers on, which I think is really interesting for him. He's looked a headgear horse for most of his life, but the first, the, the first time he wore cheek pieces, he, he ran like particularly badly, but with the benefit of hindsight, he was, just wasn't in a great place at the time. So, uh, look, I think it's the right time to go again, and if, um, if it sends him the right way and allows him to lay up nice and prominent, yeah, I think he'll outrun those odds. He's a funny little horse, isn't he? He's got he, a funny he, little he look is, about him, a funny odd. little way about him, but <laughs> he clearly has ability. He's definitely odd. If there was a f now, we can start the campaign now. If there was a four-mile grade one hurdle at Cheltenham, <laughs> he'd win it five times in nice, a row. Nice, nice. Um, can I just yeah. ask with him, obviously, on the, on the same day, very much hopeful for that drawing ground with Bambridge, would you want the same for him? No, he's fine either yeah. way. Soft, like, but, uh, I, I think he'll handle any ground, but soft would just put more emphasis on stamina, which should help him, but I, I wouldn't be fussed either way, to be honest. Okay. Uh, Tony, who's your selection in the stairs? It's a nice, it's sort of a healthy looking betting market, I think. Yeah, I'll, I'll mention if Joseph does go for the blinkers, he's 10 from 112 in first time blinkers since, since 2016. Uh, Champ has been working in cheap pieces at home. 
Uh, Henderson's got a decent straight weight with first time cheap pieces. He's 17 from 79 since uh, in the last eight years as well. Um, I keep on coming back to um, another 12, a champion's 12, and, and so is Paisley Park. I just think, I think, you know, you know, aunties and uncles and all that. But you know, if he wasn't 12, I mean, he's like I said, his body of work this season doesn't make him a 16 to 14 to one chance in this. I mean, I know it's a long time since he won it. Was it back in 2019? But he's been placed a couple of times since, and although he's not as good as ever this year, he's only been chinned in in three photos. So. I think from an each way angle in the race, you know, if you park his age to one side, um, yeah, I think uh, Paisley Park is, is overpriced on what he's done this season and his back catalogue at Cheltenham and in this race. A nod to the older boy, love it. What, just confirm Paisley Park's price there? Uh, 16. Lovely. Very fair. I think that that's compared, very fair. And uh, coming back to uh, prices that compare, uh, compare very favourably to the exchange price, that tier poo boost from two to 11 to four is big. It's big. Consider if the ground you know, stays soft heavy, it could well be the odds compilers are looking at a different forecasts from me and thinking if it does dry out, um, you know, we, we could be on a, a live one to getting beat here. But because all his best form, all his best forms on soft and heavy. So that might be one angle of why the sportsbook are looking to take him on with that, with that boost to 11 to four. But compared to exchange price... It's 3.35 in the exchange see, see, at see, the see, moment. Look, see, that's, okay. nearly, that's nearly a half a point bigger on, than on the exchange. Lovely. Um, so right. generous, those traders. So I was going to say, a generous bunch out there, aren't they? Um, let's move on to any other business on day three. Of course, we've got the Potemps, messy old race, the Plate, the Mayor's Novice, and the Kim Muir. Kev, I will come to you first for the Potemps. <laughs> Yeah, section. look, interesting race as always. Um, I think Gway Cool is interesting. Um, okay. Irish for Tailwind, as I'm sure you know, Vanessa. Um, trained by Ted Walsh. <laughs> 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 uh, like, she, she's bred to, she's bred, like, stamina both sides of the pedigree, and she's improved for stepping up and trip. Um, she, was, she was a little bit unfortunate not to win the big three-mile handicap hurdle at the Dublin Racing Festival. Like, they ride her with a lot of confidence. And I, I think her rider thought that it was all in hand and the, the, the eventual winner just kept pulling out, which I think was a surprise to everyone in fairness. But she ran great. It was probably no harm. She only went up a few pounds rather than going up a bunch for winning. Leaves her on a lovely weight here. Um, look, I think there's more to come. Her arc of improvement has been quite steep. And um, the trip is the thing. She just stays really, really well. Um, and yeah, I, I'd, I'd give it a mention for Gabby's Cross as well. Oh, yeah. Det detected a, 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 some subtle... Well, that was after last night, wasn't it? Yeah, I detected yeah. some subtle confidence from Henry de Bromhead speaking to him last night that made me go back and re-watch the, the last couple of runs over hurdles. And um, I could definitely see the case and um, has been trained for the race, you know, well handicapped relative to the chasing form. So um, definitely on my radar, but Gway Cool is the one I'm sticking with. Lovely. Um, TC, do you have one for the Potemps to throw into the mix as well? Yeah, but it's, um, it's not an anti-post recommendation because it's the, it's the um, a day of the race job. It's um, because it needs decent ground, and that's Highland. Uh, it won a qualifier uh, earlier on in the season, and he shaped a lot better than it appears when he was third at Newbury next time, travelling really well. They, they didn't really go for him. Clearly, they, they got qualified already with that win. And he reappeared after a break over two mile three at Ascot last time, and he certainly caught my eye. But the problem with him is, like I said, they do think he's a lot better on, on decent ground, and that is borne out by the facts as well. Um, another Henderson horse I've been told has been working in headgear. Uh, I couldn't You're find full out. of the inside knowledge today, I aren't couldn't, you? I couldn't, I, I, couldn't work, I, I couldn't ascertain or get it out of the person involved um, what the headgear was. But apparently Chantry House has been going equally as well as champion in first-time headgear as well. But uh, I imagine it's because it's a JP horse that uh, secrecy is more to the fore there. <laughs> OK, thank you very much for that. And Kev, last mention to you for day three, because um, the Mayor's Novices hurdle, you had one for obviously... There's been so much hype on the preview circuits, and I can't even mention the preview circuit because obviously the only preview you need is this one right here, obviously. But there has been a lot of hype, a lot of chat about Brighter Days Ahead. As you flagged up, 
weeks ago on both Wade In and Racing Only Better, courtesy of your knowledge of Gordon's glint. Gordon's glint, yeah. yeah. Gordon glint. <laughs> As we've coined the phrase. Gordon's glint was right there a good few weeks ago about this horse, brighter days ahead. Yeah, and look, at she shortened a lot, obviously. You know, the talk has been so big. Um, but in fairness, like it is, it is a, a, a spicy little race, I'd say. Mm. You know, Jade the Grugy is going in a little bit under the radar, surprisingly. Well, it's mad, because when she won her last race, everyone was absolutely yeah. hyped up for her for this. But then all the chat around Brighter Days Ahead has meant that she's kind of been pushed out in the betting and in the chat stakes as yeah. well. Do you, and, and do you feel like you've seen well. it, though? Do you feel like... This, all this chat about her and this, do you actually feel like you've seen it on the track? I, I saw it last time. I think I did, there was such a, a, for what she is, like in looking at her, like she's, a, she's probably going to be a stay and chaser. And for her to jump as well as she did um, over whatever it was, two mile five last time, I just thought she was electric. And just it, it's, you know, there is an element of reading between the lines a little bit because you, you haven't seen all the evidence on the track clearly. You can say the same with Jade de Grugy yeah. um, and with Dicerinas to an extent. So you, you are, you know, paddling in the waters of the unknown a little bit. But yeah, I just that like Gordon, you don't see it lots with him. You don't see it lots with him, this sort of chat. And in fairness to him, having kind of been talking to him and watching for Gordon's glint for many years now, like when, when, you, when you do see the sparkle, um, he, he's rarely far off like okay. that, that they are really, and she doesn't need to be a tip topper to win this clearly. He's mm. talking about her as she could win a gold cup. You know, that's big talk. Wow. Yeah, I mean, mm. huge talk. Right, so exciting. On we go, though, to day four. And, of course, this is the big one, Gold Cup chat, coming up very shortly. But we kick off with the Triumph Hurdle on day four. And what I found very amusing is prepping for these things. We have a bit of a pre-show pre chat, obviously, and we run through what everyone on the panel wants to talk about. And as you will have noticed, not everyone had a view in those grade one races, those big races, the headline acts. Everyone wants to have a talk about the Triumph Hurdle. Everyone wants to get their line in, which I was very surprised about because, guys, it's the Triumph Hurdle, for God's sakes. But apparently you all have strong views, so here we go. Sir Gino, top of the market, has been there for a very long time, taking on the likes of Malgebra, Cargis, uh, Salvador Mundi in there, and then you've got horses that might not run ground-dependent with Salva and the likes in behind. Kevin, I shall start with you here. The U50s might expand it. It's a super race, I think. And it's I, a super I do. race. I mean, it's the yeah. triumph. But it's not the triumph like the old triumphs, you know, but pre-Boodles when there was yeah. 25 of them and it was all a bit mental. It, it is a lot more refined now. And um, I, I do like Nürburgring, and I'm getting a bit more confident the closer we get. Um, he's still a very big price. Um, look, he, like his form is very solid. He, he was particularly good on the clock in his penultimate start. Um, last time he went to Leopardstown, I was hopeful he'd win. He just got bottled up in a steadily run race and he didn't really get a proper cut of them until 100 yards out really. And he's the type, he just would benefit from a bit of space just to use his action and what have you. He's a real stayer. And like, I think there's definitely more to come. Like I would, now it'd be a, it'd be a minority view. Like I think he's the best juvenile in Ireland myself. Wow. Um, and I, I'm hoping he'll be able to show that on the new course, which will like be particularly suitable to him. Um, like he would have been really interested in the boodles off top weight, I feel, but just the, the old course to the new course, like I feel with him, like it would be a significant difference in suitability. So like ground wise, not fussed, whatever way it comes up. And um, like his jumping's got better and better with each start. Like he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a Larry so-and-so now. You wouldn't want to hit the front too soon with him, but that's just mm -hmm. him. And I, I think he'll be a lovely ride. And um, yeah, look at him, Sergino, you, you have loads of respect for him. He was super impressive, showed a lot of speed, I thought. And the clock would tell you that as well last time. But the, the triumph is rarely about speed. There's a lot of galloping in, that, in the second half of that race. And just with Nicky Henderson's stable form, like he, like he, he looks short to me now. Like would, you, would you have him short, Tony? Um, I wouldn't back him, but I wouldn't lay him. I know that's a pretty cowardly thing to do, but as we've said about responsible gambling and stuff like that, I mean, you can, you can sit on the bench and you can sit these kind of races out. Um, I was massively impressed by him. And like I said, I do some work with Nico de Boinville and they clearly think he's an absolute superstar. But wow. we're, coming back, we're, we're coming back to that training form again. I think you have to factor it in. I mean, the horses, what was he? Four to five, eight to eleven with a sports. Four to six, even. He's, on he's the four to six. Now, if the trainer was in better form, four to six, no problem whatsoever. 
when you got tra when you got trainings in bad form, you ha there has to be some price correction. I don't think there has been here. Um, yeah, I mean, I, hopefully, I really hope Warren Greatrex gets a bid run out of Mighty Bandit because is he going to run? Um, well, the horses. I meant to get in touch with him this morning. And I totally forgot. But the whole, obviously, he was a massive person. Was, did he was that on that cool well dispersal? Did he go for four hundred and twenty grand or something like that? Which is madness, considering apparently he bled last time. Is a, 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 a theory. I'm putting up horses that bled last time, which is probably not <laughs> it's probably not the best way to go here, is it? Um, TC special. I'll, I'll end up getting a bloody nose myself here. But I just think, <laughs> do you, if you remember, all the time bandits were going mad about uh, about this horse. Mm. Uh, when he won earlier in the season, and I went and had a look on the exchange. He actually traded at a low of 6.2 for this, and when I looked at the exchange this morning on the way over, he was trading in the hundreds on the exchange. Now, if he comes back to that, that form uh, of his debut run on the clock, he's no forlorn hope for a place, but I do think um, Sir Gino will take a lot of beating. Would I back him at his current price? No. Do I think he's the real deal? Very probably. Oh, I was going to say on Thursday, if, you, if you're asking for a bit of gossip... Well, I wasn't, but OK. <laughs> apparently, Gavin Cromwell did a private lunch stroke dinner in the last couple of days. and That's the gossip alarm. He yeah. told... <laughs> and I know Kev likes this horse as well. Apparently, he told everybody his nap of his meeting is let's be clear about it in the plate. Oh. Um, you really liked his a potential grade one horse earlier in the year, didn't you? The, yeah, yeah and the, the, the trip, I'd say, might be the thing. Mid-range might be... Lads, lads, Daryl's going to very let's, let's not take, there, let's not, explode here. Let's not take the know, shine off what could Darryl, be the second coming in Let the people Sajino. know that you put no stock whatsoever in trainer form. I was oh, just about geez. to say, the old trainer form like, like, that we mentioned, a... anybody who listens yeah. to Racing Only Better will know that these boys have a difference of opinion when it comes to whether you should take into, whether you should factor in trainer form. Yeah. Well, in course, this circumstance, the way Tony put it, I do agree, because I do think there will be a market correction in terms of, because of that fact. Now, okay. the rest of the trainer form stuff is, is absolute nonsense to me, but <laughs> look, this Sir Gino, this is, diff this is different class. Like, this is... This is very, very good. This is the one horse throughout the whole week that has the absolute wow factor. Wow. But you watched that performance at Cheltenham the last day. The sectionals were, were brilliant. The visual impression. Sometimes you can work through all the form you like, but you see something and you think, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's how I felt when I watched him. Really? I will not have him beat. They are much for muchness in Ireland as far as I'm concerned. We haven't got any standout over there. Yes, Masper could take a step forward. But you can go back and look at his French run. Um, I thought Ethical Diamond was probably the one to take out of that, that grade one at, at the DRF. But this is just different. This is different class. And the, the, After Kempton, Nico said, if he gets his jumping together, it'll be a force to be reckoned with. When have you ever heard Nico de Bourneville speak like that? Mm. Ever. And it matches up to what we've seen. This is a proper, proper horse. So he's I your, like, if Sir Gino gets beat at the festival, you will be white with shock type horse. Oh, I'd fall down. Fall I'd absolutely fall, fall down, down yes. Yeah. Yeah. He won't be beat. Let's not put that it, in the air. It's quite interesting. I mean, I don't know this for a fact, but the Henderson camp are worried about the stable form. Make no mistake <laughs> about that. I, I do know that. What for are you a doing fact. this for? Oh. So, well, have what? a guess. <laughs> but, <laughs> what are you doing this for? What they, what, I think what they're going to be doing in the lead up to Sheldon, they're going to be working their horses in the morning before confirming at 12 o'clock at the five day stage. So Oof. if they're not happy. I don't like the sound of that. It's all in isolation. <laughs> like the other day, you, look, let's people, not are, go down wow, let's people not... are saying that Stable's out of form because a, four, a 90 rated four year old pulled up on its second start at Hereford. Like, yeah. That's don't got go nothing there. to do with Don't go there. Well, let's not, like, let's not open that can of worms because I won't be able to control them um, if we go down that route. Let's move on mm. to the Albert Bartlett. Mm. Um, Barry, I will come to you for the market here because we've obviously got the three Mullins horses up at the top. We've got Dancing City, High Class Hero, and Reading Tommy Wrong taking on below them the UK horses, Gidley Park, Shanag Bob, and Captain Teague. Now, I think this is going to stay at home, this grade one. I know it's a bold shout, but I do think it's going to stay actually not just at home, but within the Betfair family, courtesy of Captain Teague. All right, well, I hope you're right. Yeah, he's uh, currently trading. Uh, he's a nine-to-one chance on the sports book. It's six to field. It's the most open novice hurl at the festival. Reading Tommy Wrong, six, like you say, along with High Class Hero, Dancing City in there at six and it's eight bar. Interesting to see what the lads have to say about this. 
Yeah, well, let's kick off then with Daryl here, because uh, the Friday, actually, you've got some pretty strong views on, obviously kicked off with the strongest of them all, with Sir Gino, but you also have a pretty firm, firmed up view in this as well. Yeah, I, I do like reading Tommy wrong. I like the way he's taken step forwards with each of his starts. The latest, where he won the lawless and nace. I mean, if you watch him throughout that whole entire race, he's losing ground at every hurdle, and Daryl Jacob was pushing him up into the rear of the field and just not giving him enough daylight, I didn't think, to see his hurdles. He almost surprising him at times but he still was back on the bridle back mm. on the bridle every time he was asking him and, and he made a mistake at the last and still managed to pick up Il Atlantique in the closing stages he looked like a three miler to me he's bred to improve for the distance um, I think he's a pretty smart horse I think he's being underestimated because of the comments of Willie Mullins saying that Daryl gave him a cute ride when yeah. really I thought he was the best horse in the race that's interesting and I think also as Barry touched upon it's, a, it's the it's the most open novice hurdle of the week, Tony. Mm. And as a result, we're getting a good bit of value with these horses. Yeah, I, it could well be. If it is a big field, it could well be we get four places of the day, but that's, that's to be confirmed. It all depends on the, on, on the, depth, of the, the depth of the field. Um, before I, I just get one last thing about the stable for me. Oh, no, please, no, please, no, 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 please, no, no, please, no, 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 it is going to be very quick because I know people are going to be watching this and commenting to say, how can you sell that when you've tipped Henderson's, Jinko, Blue and Highland? So <laughs> I'm fully aware of the stable form, but the price compensates. That's all I'm saying. You've so just always got to have that last I'm not, I'm not word, dis No, it? I'm not dissing the stable form, but I know some people would say, how can you say that when you've tipped two of his Albert anyway, Bartlett's selection, please. Johnny Who. Okay. Um, <laughs> mainly because uh, of the pedigree. Now, it should be more oh. Kevin and your angle here. But this is very un-UTC. Well, you wouldn't know. I'm not... You don't just pigeonhole me, Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'll have you... HR, HR. HR. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I just think, you know, he's a point-to-point -point winner. He's coming back for more in the cello. Um, I think he travelled well last summer at Gidley Park. And I just think, I think they just went away from him at the end. I think the step up in trip is going to really suit this. Like I said, he's a point-to-point -point winner. He's a full brother to a three-mile winner. He's a half brother to a London national winner over three-mile five in doing fine. And the damn one over four miles. And you trying to tell me, if you tried to tell me this horse isn't going to prove for three miles, I don't believe you. And I think he's about 16 and 20s. So uh, even though I, you might get an extra place on the day, I think... With 20s or 16s each way will be absolutely fine. And what are you going to tell me, Baz? Yeah, he's 16 and he's hard 17 on the exchange. So wow. Yeah, okay. That, 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 is, that is just that is a very very good. When I have an each way bet, I always look at the exchange price. And if I'm getting 16 free places about a horse that's like you said, hard fit at 17 on the exchange, then that's when you should be playing. It probably won't endear you to the sports of the golf compilers, but. Okay. If they're asleep at the wheel, take yep. advantage. Never. <laughs> <laughs> they're all here, the old compilers. The old compilers, <laughs> the old compilers you know, what, yeah. a, what a handsome bunch they are, yeah. too. We always, we always say it on the podcast. A handsome <laughs> bunch of old compilers, that's the one. Uh, let's move on to the big one. Gold Cup, of course, and what a fascinating Gold Cup this is. We've got Galloping Deschamps up at the top of the market, as he's been there pretty much since his win last year, despite the defeats in between. But what he's done at Leperstown recently have really, has really blown us all away. But in behind him, and this is what I love about this race, is yes, we've got a short price favorite up at the top there, but we've got so many others, right down to the odds of like 20 to one that you can make cases for. Fast or slow, Shishkin, Jerry Kalon, Brave Man's Game, overlooked in the market. Hewick, Lohan Press, Gentleman's Game, Corrick Rambler, and even the real whacker down there at the likes of 25 to one. It's an absolute cracker. Let's start with you, Barry, for the betting and an odds boost as well. Yeah, our fourth and final odds boost is none other than Galloping Deschamps. Is, uh, was a five to four chance of being odds boost out to seven to four, so that's pretty punchy. Faster, slow, nine to two, 11 to two, Shiskin. Jerry Colomb is nine, 12, Brave Man's Game, and Hewick is a 12 to one chance, Lampresse 14. Yeah, you heard me right. Seven to four from five to four, Galloping Deschamps. Wow. I'd, say, I'd say Ryan McHugh did that, did he? Oh. No doubt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're obviously going to get all of the boys' opinions on the Gold Cup, but this will be a race that I'm asking for you guys to decide whether you're backing or laying Gallop in Deschamps. So get ready for that. But I'm not going to ask until we've heard from the boys. So, Daryl, I think I shall start with you. We've got a standout steeplechaser yeah. of his generation in Gallop in Deschamps. We know what he can do here and at Leopardstown, but there's got to be a bet in here away from him, is there? 
Well, depending on what price he's going to be, it could be him. You know, the Racing Post have him the highest rated Gold Cup winner since Gordo Star. So, All right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, wow. it depends what the price he is on the day. Look, he's had an extra run this season. I suppose that's one little niggle I've got with him. It was such a big performance at Christmas. That would just worry me. Just to, just to confirm, though, what price would you back him at? Like, when does he Seven become... or four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The odds boosted. The price. odds boosted seven to four. Yeah, I would. Um, but I'm gonna for now. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at La Hombres each way. Oh my um, god. Yeah. Look. <laughs> look. If the Ascot run last time was a bit of a disaster, but I think if you go back and you watch that race and you look at it as you're watching a prep run for a Gold Cup in isolation, you'd probably come away quite happy with it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. So yeah. Com and coming back, we know we don't want to go left right-handed. Uh, right yeah. We know we don't want good ground. Coming back left-handed, going up back up to three miles. Hopefully, you get a bit of dig in the ground, which I suppose is another factor and good reason to wait for the day. But I can't get how, out of my head how filthy he was in that Brown advisory when he won that. Mm. Like he was ridiculously good. You know, he was all the rage then, wasn't he, for for the Gold Cup? And I really don't think we've seen the best of him. And three miles at Cheltenham. Is going to be his ideal conditions, isn't it? And yeah. if he gets soft in the ground, way. Well, hey, Sorry, I pulled that sort of like quite dramatic negative face there. Yeah. But I'm with you. <laughs> what he did when he. No, I'm not with you. I'm with him. I'm, no, I'm not with you with him. Sorry, let me finish my sentence. I'm with you in the sense of I can't get out of my head what he did as a novice chaser. He yeah. was wow that day. And I totally see the case for the fact that we haven't seen the best of him since the injury. But what my fear is is sometimes they don't come back to full mm. capability after an injury. And that, going into a Gold Cup, would be my worry with him. Possibly. And they don't seem overly confident when I listen to Venetia. No, the plane exactly. Over. That, that was, like, it was like, it's not the be-all and end-all. But he's going to be ridden promptly. And this lad, when he gets into a rhythm, he's a tremendous jumper. Mm. He's gaining lengths at his fences, you know. And you're looking behind. They start making mistakes. He could just, he yeah. could just be in the right position. If he's good enough, he's good enough. But he'll give you a decent run for, his, for your money at... Uh, what price back? Sorry, 14. Yeah. 14, yeah. 14, yeah. yeah. Um, if you're talking about horses being pretty effective jumpers, Kev, fast or slow has done so little wrong and his jumping is really um, pretty, I mean, it's pretty perfect, his jumping, mm. but he couldn't beat Gallopin de Champs around Leopardstown. Can he beat him around Cheltenham? Um, look, I think the way they have to approach it is, right, we need to save every yard here. We need to be brave. You know, he jumps well enough you know, in, in traffic, that I think they can do that. I think JJ, like, won't be under any big pressure. He can creep around on the inside there and, and look for a bit of luck. And, like, I think he'll be fine to the trip myself. You know, there's some, some concerns in some quarters about that. I think he'll be fine. Look, this is a really deep race, best race of the week. You know, I find myself not in a dissimilar spot to where we were this last year. You'll remember, like, it was set up, like, broadly similarly. Gallop and the Champ, you suspected he was the best horse in the race. He was stand out at the top of the market, and you could very easily start making cases for a bunch of them in behind him. Mm -hmm. You know, perfectly cogent cases. And you can do the same again, but I'm coming to the same conclusion I did last year. Like, I, I, I think he just wins. I think it'll be easier for Paul Town, and this year much easier, much more straightforward ride, no stamina doubts. Um, like I don't think he's jumping quite as well as he once did, but I think he's perfectly functional. And yeah. in the second half of his races, he tends to get more fluent and, 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 and more aggressive, which is the way I like him. And um, look at, I think, the price boost out of the 7 to 4. I know if you, if you haven't listened to it on Cheltenham only better, Ryan McHugh, one of the traders, made a really cogent case for why you might want to take him on and why he might drift to a price like 7 to 4. But I, I just think that, he, look, he'd want to be that sort of price, given the depth of the field, but I, I, I gotta be with him for all the instincts that would, yeah. that, would, that would lean you towards going for something each way against them, gentleman's game or something like that. Like, I think he's just the best staying chaser. I think it's yeah. gotta be a straightforward ride, and I think he's just gonna win. Yeah, fair enough, like, yeah. I mean, Daryl talked there about, with Sir Gino, about like moments on a race course where you take away the form, the time, and all of that, and you're just left thinking mm. kind of, wow. I had that moment with Gallop and Deschamps at Leopardstown at Christmas. Mm. You know, I think I've said to you boys before that you know, I stood quite near to the rail as he can to pass me up to the line after the last. The speed he was going, so the way strong. he was going yeah, through yeah. the bridle. I mean, I was like, wow, what was that? You know? Like, and I know we didn't see that again. We at didn't, the DRF. but why would we didn't need I don't, to? I don't we think. Didn't need I think to. they were very conscious of yeah. what they were doing. I yeah. don't think they really wanted them to open up fully. And like when you look at the finishing speeds and that, like I don't think he had a particularly hard race. Like we can never know; we can only guesstimate. But mm. um, like I, I, I'd be very happy with him now. 
Uh, Tony, your view on the Gold Cup, please. Is Am I mad or am I sort of biased because I've just been to the yard that Brave Man's Game is too big a price in the sort of low teens, is he, I think? 12. I, 12, 12. I would never, look, I'm never going to put anybody off a big price source. So, but I, I, look, it's after putting up a questionable each way chance in the last and the odds compilers up in the gallery, if I put up Galloping de Champ as a five-star nap bet, I might have a red dot, <laughs> a red dot for a sniper's <laughs> yeah. rifle on my forehead. But seven to four is massive, isn't it? It's clearly massive. I mean, like everyone's said, you can, you can make, you know, the race has got depth, but it's also got a standout. Mm. Um, if he runs to two or three levels of form, he's going to win. Um, and if Ryan's that confident, I'm going to take him out for a drink and get twos after this. <laughs> <laughs> never, be, never be afraid to ask, Vanessa. Never be afraid to ask. And what That's I would not an issue I've had in the past, to be honest with you. <laughs> and if you fancy long press, Daryl didn't, didn't like to say it, but Venetia Williams' horses are in better form than it was <laughs> when the horse was when he, when yeah. he finished second at, uh, at Ascot. So yeah. when, he, when you're tipping a horse like that, put every case forward. Uh, but wait, so you're galloping Deschamps at that odds boosted price, uh, look, and then the eleven to eight is absolutely more than acceptable. The seven to four is a gift. I, I, okay. I'd, re I'd really fancy Shishkin, but the trainer farms put me off. Yeah. Right. Stop, <laughs> stop, <laughs> guys! It'll be a fight. Um, right, that is the Gold Cup done and dusted. Time after you've heard all of that, guys. Do you want to back or lay? Here you go, galloping Deschamps. Are you backing or laying him? Oh, we've got quite a lot of lays. Well, I'm gonna, hang on, wait there. I'm going to take a picture of all these lays and I'm going to come and see you yeah, for the personal yeah. business. Oh, interesting. Oh. And our own Barry as well. Fascinating. Okay. Uh, race, race of the week. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, well, we and look, it. doesn't that just prove it? The like, split the divide of opinions there. That's what we love about the game. It's all about opinions. Love to see it. Gallop into Champs. Will he win a second Gold Cup? We will find out. Not too distant future now. Um, any other business on Friday? I think it's just, what have I got here? Daryl for the county hurdle. Tony as well. Just yeah. the county hurdle. Uh, Obviously, you've got the Fox Hunters, the Martin Pipe, Mare's Chase as well. That'll be a nice little race. But just at this stage, you want to give one for the county hurdle, Daryl? Well, I'll just be interested under control. And, of um, course, yeah. And I'll probably take a little bit of confidence from yeah. the fact that Nikki's willing to push... Iberico Lord into the champion hurdle because he's rated 143. If he's going to be competing in the champion hurdle, you'd think he'd have a hell of a lot in hand mm. off 143. So he must have a bit of confidence and under control. We beat him at Sandown last year and uh, it's taken steps back in the right direction, this. Okay, and Tony, you also have one for the county hurdle as well, do you? Yeah, uh, again, uh, it's, it's a watching beef on the ground. Um, absurd got taken out of the Supreme today. Uh, and I just think of a mark of 138 in the county hurdle. Again, it, it's, I think it's, it, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a stunning mark, but it's, it's a very attractive mark given 138 over hurdles, 110 on the flat. I mean, this is a horse that won an Ebor. This is a horse that was beaten just over five lengths in the Melbourne Cup. But the problem is he does need decent ground. So I imagine they'll wait until later on in the week and hopefully the ground will dry up. But uh, I can see him going off but now Iberico Lord's out, um, I can see him going off on good ground or even good to soft ground. I can see him going off favourite. I think he's currently 10s, but about 15 on the exchange. And given there's a maximum field of 26 for the race, I'd be inclined to back him win only on the exchange. So absurd. But I'd probably wait until we got the, uh, the final decks on Wednesday morning. And then we, obviously the market then becomes uh, non one no bet. Thank you very much. We are going to wrap up with sort of naps and even just a wish or two for the festival as well, just from the, from the panel. But before we do that, don't forget, obviously, as I've been saying throughout the whole of this preview show, we will be bringing you the daily shows from Cheltenham. And of course, we'll be fleshing out all of our thoughts on not only the championship races, but those any other business races we've sort of briefly touched on today. We'll go into those in a much sort of deeper dive. So stay tuned for the daily shows as well. Guys, your naps, please. And any other wish you have for the festival? Daryl. Gino. So Gino. Of course. So Gino I could guess that. By a distance. On the, on the Racing Any Better podcast, I sometimes try and guess the naps, and I definitely, it was 101 <laughs> to be Sir Gino in the triumph for Daryl. Over to you, Kev. Um, look, at he's shortened up quite a bit in price, but I have to stick with him. I've been napping Harper's Brook now for a week or so, so I've got to keep going. 
I gotta keep going. Half has I, broken I the nap of the festival. I cannot I mean, wait to see it. <laughs> I just like the world's gone mad that I'm sat here. Are you, uh, are you on ITV next week? Yeah. They should have, they should put you in they should put you in a black chair, put a spotlight in your face, and, and make you watch that make you watch yeah. the race live to camera. And also have one of those heart rate monitors on. Just, no, I, I'd what, love what that. you wouldn't get a bubble. And, cool ah. as a breeze. And also. <laughs> A live beat machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. TC, your nap, please. Uh, I, I appreciate it's it's a it's it's a market that hasn't really got a lot of depth to it, and a lot of money would would shift the price very quickly. But I really do love Captain Guinness eight to one without Al Fabiolo each way quarter one two, uh, and I also a sports book are also top price twenty to one Captain Guinness all in, and I think twenty to one each way. Um, with Al Fabiolo in the race is perfectly fair as well. So I'm hoping when you speak to Rachel later, Captain Guinness is... Her charity bet again. We can year. raise a glass yeah. to Captain Guinness, Baz. Very good. Like, he, loves, he loves his puns. What a guy he? for the pun, TC is. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Barry, your nap or a wish for the festival? Well, I'm going to give you a nap first because I'm going to avail of the offer, which is a completely free bet on horse racing multiples every day of the festival. See. I'm going to go <laughs> two mares, Lossy Mount and Brighter Days Ahead. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's working out about 5 to 2, 11 to 4, that double at the moment. I think that will come true. My wish for the festival is that Rachel Blackmore rides the Gold Cup winner the champion hurl winner <laughs> and the champion chase winner and Paul Nichols is top trainer. Wow, well, not if, asking for too much, are if you? If that happens, bang goes your Christmas bonus. That's, then, true. That's true. What That's Christmas true. bonus? Uh, look, boys, as always, thank you very much. Very much looking forward to the daily shows. We'll be getting stuck into all those races with you guys in the next week or so. Uh, you guys out there, thank you so much for watching, for being with us as always. Hopefully, we have pointed in the direction of some winners. Don't forget all the Betfair content coming your way. You've got an interview with Rachel Blackmore, run through of her rides. That'll be available soon. You've got this preview show. You've also got the Paul Nichols preview, where, as I said earlier, he does give some really interesting intel on a good few of those horses running in the grade one races. So stay tuned for that daily shows as well and as I said at the top of the show we really want you to enjoy the Cheltenham Festival but we want you to do it responsibly have, have some fun with it make use of those safer gambling tools that Betfair have made available for you and that is me done and dusted thank you very much for watching that was our Cheltenham Festival preview show <laughs>